Hello, this is Faith of Faith and Books. How are you doing? I am on day, what day am I? Day four of COVID. I, I must have had a mild case. I'm feeling better today and I'm not coughing as much. And I actually have a little bit of energy today. So I don't think I'm over it, but I think in a couple of days I will be. Anyway, I wanted to do a review of the book, um, The Path Between the Seas, uh, The Creation of the Panama Canal, 1870 to 1914 by David McCullough. I read it on my Kindle there. Um, and I have to tell you, I have a little bit of a history with uh, David McCullough um, because when I was a kid, my dad got a a subscription to a magazine called American Heritage Magazine. Oh, I'm going to hop. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and it was a great magazine. It was unusual in that it was hardback. And um, and it was they were usually white. The covers were white. And then there would be this beautiful colored print in the center and then very handsome lettering, American Heritage. Um, and I think maybe he'd stopped getting it by the time... I was aware of it, but but there was a there was a huge I don't know if it was huge, but there was a shelf in our, in the bookcase in our den, which is where we sort of did our reading, um, that was full of these magazines, and I used to look through them a lot. I like to look through them a lot, look mostly at all the beautiful prints. Um, and when I was a kid, I read an article on the Johnstown flood, and it scared the heck out of me. I remember having nightmares. I was scared for days after reading this. Well, then fast forward much later in life, I began to hear of David McCullough. And um, I think he was like in, it was PBS series that Ken Burns did. I used to watch them, you know, when he would do those. Um, maybe he still does. I've sort of stopped watching TV, but anyway. Um, and so I think I became familiar with him then. And then he, he was becoming a very popular history writer. And at some point, I think when I was still homeschooling, I read the book 1776 by him. Really, really good. It follows George Washington for a year, that year, 1776. Um, and I loved it. And then, and I was following my husband because my husband had already, he bought it, I think, and read it. And then he bought another book, Mornings on Horseback, about Teddy Roosevelt, and so I read that too. But I think in between, he had bought this book, John Adams, and he really loved this one. This is actually hardback. And um, and it sat on, on our shelves for a decade. And then just a couple years ago, I uh, buddy read it with uh, Alba at Siriella. I'll link to her channel below, because she has a great channel. And... Um, and we read it together, and it was the year of, oh no, I'm forgetting his name. You know, the guy that was murdered by the police officer, and then started all the riots. I totally have blanked. Anyway, it was a very disturbing summer, and um, and so it was, it was unusual to be reading this. You know, it made me really appreciate him. He was the only founding father that wasn't a slaveholder. He was against it back then. He wasn't the best politician because his temperament didn't really make him good at it. But uh, but I think he had the best soul, you know. Um, anyway, very, it reads like a novel. Uh, David McCullough is just so immersive. But while reading a little bit about David McCullough, I was surprised to find that he had written, he started his writing, his history writing career with American Heritage Magazine. And that when the, this first book that he wrote, or maybe it was the second book he wrote, was on the Johnstown flood. So I looked it up and I think I read his article on the Johnstown flood that gave me those nightmares when I was a girl and I read about this horrible flood. So I really want to read the Johnstown flood. Um, hit that book. I don't have it though. My husband downloaded a Pioneers, which is much later. Um, he wrote much later. Um, so I might read that first and then John Flood. but I, I'm really interested in the John Sound Flood now just because, just because of that connection. Anyway, 
let me tell you about the, the path between the seas. So I knew nothing about the building of the Panama Canal. Um, I know my in-laws were on a cruise and they went through the Panama Canal. And I remember my mother-in-law saying that when they were going through the locks, they went up to uh, see, to, to look, and it was so incredibly humid and muggy that the minute she stepped outside, my mother-in-law got a terrible headache. And so they watched one lock and then they went back in their rooms and really going through the Panama Canal <coughs> was not the great thing that she thought it was. They just kind of felt trapped in their rooms because uh, the humidity was so bad. Anyway, um, so that was about it. That was how much I knew. And I knew something... I knew something about Noriega. I remembered that from a long time ago. Remember they played rock music outside his, was that Noriega? I can't remember. Anyway, this was, it was really interesting to learn about it. It was such a feat of engineering and it was such a complicated story. It started out with the French. Somehow the French had this contract with Colombia. Colombia controlled Panama. They had annexed it. So even though it was seen as a separate entity, it had, it was it was part of Colombia. Colombia governed it, and um, so um, so the French had some sort of contract, and the French, of course, had built the Suez Canal with the Egyptians, and uh, the guy de la Sep, something uh, who I'd never heard of, but apparently was this great French hero and figure was the one who had supervised the building and inspired the building of the Suez Canal. I had no idea that the Panama Canal and the Suez Canal were in any way related. <coughs> anyway, so this guy, um, uh, de la Sep, I never quite got his name, um, was this great hero. And so he was determined to also build this, the canal that would, um, you know, through the isthmus of, of uh, Central America. And so they were trying to figure out where, either through um, Nicaragua or Panama, they settled on Panama. And he really wanted to build the same exact thing that he had done for the Suez Canal. And But he, he could not acknowledge that it was a completely different situation, like geographically and in many other ways. And so, um, so he just... He was very good at raising money because he had this charisma and everybody just wanted to please him. And and he was this great hero. And uh, so he had a lot of charm and a lot of clout. But maybe not so much wisdom. He wasn't corrupt, but he was so sort of full of himself that, you know, he was so, uh, he'd become so popular and it's sort of... Um, I don't know, it, it closed his eyes to seeing anything that he didn't want to see. And so lots and lots of corruption just festered under him. And uh, and his son uh, took over after him and, and really was trying to manage things. And it was just so out of control. So it was this great scandal in France. Uh, they were trying to build it and um, <laughs> just defeat after defeat. They didn't have uh, the equipment they needed. It was a much harder job in Panama than in, in, this, in Suez, in, in Egypt. They didn't have the workers. The Panamanians did not want to participate. And um, they're very resentful that these, you know, gringos had come in and tried to, tried to take over. And, um, and so uh, it, it really, <coughs> oh, and, and the disease, there was terrible, terrible a yellow fever and malaria. And so it was just a terrible situation. They kept trying, they kept trying to refinance. There just all sorts of things were going on. And finally, the whole thing came toppling down. And um, so then the U.S. wanted to get involved. And, um, and this was all when McKinley was president and then he gets assassinated and then Teddy Roosevelt becomes president and Teddy Roosevelt was really gung-ho for the Panama Canal. He went down to visit um, just one time though. Um, and uh, so the Americans came in and the Americans appreciated how much the French got done in spite of the fact that they had lots and lots of obstacles. Um, but the the wise thing about <laughs> well, it took first 
couple of false steps. <coughs> but what happened was they got a guy, Stevens, who decided that the first thing they needed to do was build a, a solid infrastructure. They had to get rid of the disease. They had to build a place where the workers were, were you know, could come and live. And they had to get uh, better machinery. Oh, well, what he really, the number one thing was the railroad. He had to make the railroad that went across Panama work for digging the canal. So he really focused on all that stuff. And what was, to me, the most fascinating part of the whole story was fighting yellow fever and malaria and how they did that. And there was this doctor, Dr. Gorgas, G-O-R-G-A-S, who was this hero that, that figured out, I mean, other people had sort of had ideas, but he was the one that really did it, um, that figured out what mosquito caused yellow fever and how to get rid of it. And it turned out that what people would do is, that, you know, there's so many insects in Panama um, that the insects are always climbing onto your table. You know, you can't get away from them. And so they would put little cups, little saucers of water um, and then put the, you know, the leg of the table there and that would keep the ants uh, away. And, but, but the uh, mosquitoes would breed in them. They didn't have screens in their windows. I mean, that's been dreadful. I can't stand mosquitoes. Like some people want to retire to Florida. Well, right now Florida's kind of a mess, but I mean, I don't want to go someplace that has <laughs> has so many so many mosquitoes and chiggers and that sort of thing. I just I I'm more of a northern person. I'd rather go north than south. Um, but anyway, so anyway, so they figured out that's where they were breeding. They figured out the malarial um, um, uh, mosquitoes, and and it was it was really this incredible effort, and. So at the beginning, when they were first starting the French, it was horrible and so many people, thousands of people died. And by the end, you were barely bothered by any mosquitoes at all. They, they had reduced it by so much. It was really incredible. The other thing was that the US kind of lucked out because they started using state-of-the-art uh, in industry developments, you know, so electricity had become more common so they could use that. Um, they had figured out different ways to galvanize steel or whatever. Um, and so, so to actually make the fixtures of the locks and that sort of thing um, was better. You know, just that they, they, it was just a, a really good timing that the, the feats of engineering, the, the ability to design had really hit a high point and, and technology had developed as such so that it really helped them like things that 10 years before people had tried, they couldn't have done, but now they could do it. So it really, it really worked out. So it was a very, very interesting, um, book. There were places where I just couldn't concentrate. <laughs> um, I didn't understand all the high finance. Um, I didn't really, un you know, when, uh, McCullough goes into all the technicalities of how big, everything is and he's putting everything in numbers and I, it doesn't tell me anything it doesn't help me um so there were parts of it where i just sort of <coughs> it wasn't holding my interest as much um but overall it was a good read now this was one of his earlier books i think he wrote in 1977 um and so in the end uh, i think he got a i think he became a better writer as he you know which is usual as he went along um, so I think his later books are more readable, whereas this one was maybe a little uneven. But still, I'm very glad I read it. I'm glad I learned about it. <coughs> um, yeah, it was a very interesting, uh, um, uh, you know, part of history that I, I did not know anything about. And, and um, he, uh, McCullough goes into how they kind of created this perfect little <laughs> society for white people, but but um, the West Indian people that had come in, like from Barbados and stuff, who did a lot of the work for the Americans, um, they were treated very differently, of course. Um, so yeah, it was a very interesting book. I'm, I'm glad I read it. And I do have a goal. In my head, I wanted to read more David McCullough. 
but since he passed away recently, I, I really want to read everything. So, um, so I might read the Pioneers or the Johnston Flood next, but yeah, uh, I really like David McCullough. I think he's uh, a great writer. So I don't know if I've made any sense and I've talked too much. So I will say goodbye and I hope that you are reading something interesting and, um, you know, happy reading and take care. Bye-bye.